Thank you. Hi everybody. Sorry it takes me a minute to get things going. <laughs> so let me know if you can how the sound is because I um, I tried to set up a mic kind of last minute um, and couldn't couldn't do it. But I um, I'm using the um, I'm using the webcam mic and it's a little farther away from the laptop so maybe that will be a little bit better. And um, Marcia is here today to help help me and answer questions and keep an eye on me and keep an eye on things. <laughs> Thanks. So good morning. Oh good, I'm glad it sounds okay. So the webcam is like up close to my head, so maybe that's going to sound sound a little bit better. I tried to do a, a kind of a little preliminary run when I got to work and um, worked on some shapes with with the new colors, of course. Um, so this is just a this is just a circle um, and i'll show you guys we're going to go through everything and i learned a lot i'm glad i got fit this in because every time i do something i learn something but i wanted to do a calla lily and i noticed that they were you know their stem color on the back and their pretty color on the front and um and i like this you kind of make this teardrop kind of shape and then you can, I think it needs to be a little wider, like I'm seeing as I put it into the shape. And I wanted a more distinct edge, so I folded it, but I don't like the way, I want this to be a smoother transition from red to green. So what I think I need to do is after I fold it, put a little bit of red on top and then keep felting. So remind me of that one. And we could try a different color calla lily. We can try a, um, a purple one. I tried a day lily. I also learned. Um, I, I, I cut. It, it doesn't have enough in the middle. Like it's too starfishy. Um, so it, it doesn't have a ton of structure. I can, when I construct the flower, I can kind of pinch it up and... Um, try to get it, give it a little more structure or felt these um, where I cut it, <laughs> I shouldn't have cut it, felt that back together so that it has, so that it's a little sturdier and has a little more um, of the, the, where the base of the flower comes into the stem. It just needs more. Um, with an orchid in my, not an orchid, an iris, I made this one, and again, same thing. It, it, it can work, but I, I just went a little too far with how much of the petal was independent. Like, a, it needs to be subtle. It needs to be like m more of the, more of the piece is solid, just with a little roundness out to each side. Because when I did... When I did this one, it's hard to get out because they're all knotted up in here. Um, 
when I did this one, it was just a circle. It was just a whole circle. And all I did was just cut a little, a little part of it to get, um, to get a slightly more dished shape. So I think I'm going to stick with that design. I'm not, I'm always kind of like just trying to make, make the wool work the way it wants to work to make beautiful shapes and not, you know, super try to make a specific flower, but I'm inspired by the flowers. This daffodil um, is a little forced looking to me with the petals all cut. I probably would have, I didn't refelt them after I cut them. So refelting them would have helped. Also, this had a folded edge, which is a little too strong. So I made them with, um, without a folded edge and, and the edges just kind of naturally do a little um, wavy, wavy thing. So that I like better, it's a little softer. And then instead of the cut petals, which you could totally do cut petals, I would probably do, um, something like this kind of shape for the outside of my, my daffodil. You could even try to give it a little more edges and points and stuff. So I did those and then I did several different leaves and I'm going to demo my favorite is pre felt with something on top. So I did some, that are only pre-felt. Um, it's just not as pretty. It felt and it makes a little leaf, but it's a little boring. And um, this is a fun shape. It's like a, I did kind of a heart shape. So it can be, you know, a little bit of a different shaped leaf, kind of more like ivy or something. Um, I did one without any pre-felt and it, I could have used more wool. I just, I just didn't use enough wool, I guess. And it's just, it's just a little floppy and wimpy. And then I like to make a piece. Um, and I decided to not use pre felt on this because I want it to be a little thinner because it's the, um, it's the receptacle of the flower. And so you cut it and then you use it around where the, the base of the flower meets the stem to kind of like felt it all together. So I wanted this to have a little bit more um, forgiveness to it. And then, um, yeah, and then sometimes you'll have like little extra piece of something that you cut. Oh, I've tried to do all kinds of things. Um, the wet felting um, flower tutorial that already exists would be really good to watch. So I'd watch this and that, no particular order. Um, this was like a weird little fail. I mean, it's okay, it's just like this. But that, like making that into more of like a bud, you know, and having a few buds in your display is really cute. This one, <clears throat> they're all locked together. This one's just rolled up strip. You know, we could probably watch some fruit and vegetable flower. Uh, <laughs> um, like the time lapse where they. Um, no, what's it called? Um, but when you go out to eat and everything's fancy, there's a word that's just escaping me. But you know, they make all kinds of. Oh, with the food? Yeah, they do like all the. What the frick? I, I was a cook for that. several years. <laughs> I'll think of it. I'll think of it halfway through the video. Um, or someone could just say it. Garnish. <laughs> That's the word I was looking for. So there's probably some pretty cool videos that show like ways to cut and fold things. Um, okay, well, let's get to it. I'm gonna, I just wanted to show you sort of where, where my brain was and what kinds of things I was, um, I was building off of in my process today. So, yeah. there's everybody saying where they're from all over the world. That's Same amazing. Well. And um, a lot of people are having a bit of an echo. And I wonder if with it being so 
the walls, everything just being so hard in here, if there's a general... Yeah, but we've never had an echo issue before, really. So let's do a little experiment. I'm just going to keep talking, and I'm going to try to change my audio. And um, you guys tell me, um, tell me if it's, tell me if it's better. We're going to call it okay. Audio input capture two. Okay. And we're going to use the built-in microphone. Okay. And. And about 10 seconds away, okay. Okay. So I just did. I just switched, I think, <laughs> if I understand the way this works properly. I just switched my audio. And um, we'll just go with this, and then you can let me know um, if it's better. You say when you sit forward, the echo just Okay. Well, I also just changed it, so turn off speaker. Oh, turn off speaker on computer. I think when I select the audio source, it should turn off. It should only use, okay, it's worse now. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go back. Well, our internet here might be a little wacky, too. Like, just, like, oh, like yeah. some of the words aren't syncing up. So, um, also, I reminded Marsha to, re to remind me, or asked Marsha to remind me, to say that we've had some internet issues. Um, so, if things cut out, what I'll probably do is I might end up on Facebook. Um, but if you go to Serafina Fiber Art um, on Facebook, you should be able to find me either way, whether it's video or um, YouTube or Facebook. Okay. Yeah, I don't think, I don't have my computer volume on, I'm just listening to Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's not irritating. It's not super echoey. Okay. <laughs> okay. I turned off my computer volume and maybe that'll help. But really, all the streaming stuff I'm using, it should select the input device and not work from both. So, but we're just going to motor on. And yes. Your outfit's really cute. Oh, That's thank it. you. <laughs> Some people have come in. Thank you. I wore my flower dress today. <laughs> okay, back to OBS. And I'm going to um, switch to the overhead camera. So we make them made tiny. So that you guys can see. And... First thing I'm going to do is cut some leaf shapes out. I like to have some kind of long ones for like lilies and calla lilies and sort of long skinny ones. Oh, it probably would be good to just go ahead and tease my fiber up while it's whole. Then to try to tease the fiber up once it's all cut up. So if you are using wet felting with pre-felt, and we did this on the frogs, we, um, you want to get your fiber sort of lifted so that whatever you put on top of it, wants to felt nicely into it. It stretches out when you <laughs> when you do this, so uh, you have to be a little bit careful about it. These are probably a little long, so I'm just going to make them not quite so long. And as you can see, I am not 
I am irregular in my in my shapes. So um somebody's asking what kind of prefelt you're using? This is the merino prefelt. That's the ivy color. Um ivy. Mm -hmm. And could you put silk panties onto the prefelt? Sure. And the large picture on the shelf behind you is that um, felted. I think they're talking about the oil painting. Oh, uh, the oil painting? That's an oil painting. <laughs> when we if if when we go the other way, I will um, I'll try to angle the camera up so that you can see it. I love it. It's on a um, it's on a reclaimed board, so the board had a lot of um, kind of interest going on. So I'm moving this over so that I can do my leaves over here, and you can see about how much you can fit on a wet felting kit. Got them a little. There we go. And I'm going to use. I have a little combo that I made. Well, the light, the um, the colors better today. And I have leaf merino, and I have sprout. So these are some combos I'm going to use. And it's funny, you don't, it's okay if you have a little like fringe, it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up with your, um, with your leaf edges. Because when you felt it, the wool grabs to itself and it all kind of sucks itself in. So that's pretty cool. We're going to put a little bit of this light color on here. And that's the larger of our two uh, wet felting kits that you have. Yes, you yes. The smaller kit, you're not, you're probably going to be able to fit a few leaves, you know, a flower and the receptacle, the green receptacle. Um, also, I haven't been worrying about the other side. Let's do one where both sides have wool just to see how we like that. Because this pre felt's a little, um, it's a little uh, muted and so if you want something brighter, maybe put a little wool on the other side, which I did not tease up, but that's okay. Um, let me show you some of the leaves that had fiber on them. So this one had a darker, like a bluey teal fiber on it. That's like super pretty. It's what I made to do my dragon. And that's the other side with nothing, with just the pre-felt. So, which is kind of cool. I like, I kind of like that look because leaves are kind of like that. They look, they look different on the, on the underside. But these two, we're going to have a little fiber on both sides. I'll show you that if I have it here. That darker mix. I do not. Um, any questions right now? Uh, Sherilyn is asking if you could use a fine wool fabric instead of pre felt for the base. Um, it, not if you want to felt into it. If it was already felted. If it was already felted, yeah. As long as there were fibers. Yeah, so pre felt sort of does its own thing. I'm just looking to see what other colors I have. Let's do one with a little this is just silk. And then this has a little bit of wool in it, so I'm going to put that on top. Remember that the silk, the viscose, the bamboo, um, they need a little something with it. And in terms of 
pulling your fiber and what you're laying on here just very thin as consistent as you can be as broad as like kind of single stroke as you can be the better it's like it's like glazing in a painting like you just want you just want to change the color a little bit i am not building a huge amount of wool on top of the pre-fill so i have a few with the lighter colors i have a few with sprout um, i have a few with leaf looking for different silk that's right we're good and then I want to make that long that long green strip that will I'll cut up and I'll just be able to use however I need to use it. But when I say the receptacle, um, that's the part of the flower that I mean. Just this, this area under the flower that holds it all together with the stem. So I want to make myself something that's like full of options, you know? Um, so I, I'm just going to go to the side with a little bit of wool. I'm going to go about, I'd say about a foot. That should give me four flowers or so. And then I'm going to go a little crisscrossy up and down. So like, this ends up being, once I crisscross, kind of three thin, even layers. This is pretty light, this color. So maybe I will put a little sprout at the other end. Well, actually, I can have this side out. So let me put a little bit of sprout going up and down on this side so that I have, can have two options for um, once my flowers are done, I'll have a light side and a dark side, I can, um, it's reversible. Just like my favorite bathing suit. <laughs> so would uh, snow hair work? Yes, it would. Snow hair has angora in it. It'll wet felt, but it will halo, which might not be very flowery. Um, probably, um, just the natural Merino would be your best, your best white. And I want you guys just to notice, like you can move things around. Like it, the wool is so amazing. It kind of wants to stick. Like you saw me, I could even flip this over. Um, you're not going to hurt anything, you know? I mean, if it snags on something, it might pull apart, but, um, it's pretty cool. Like, if you lay something out and it's in your way and you want to fit more, you can you can slide it over. Any suggestions for making flowers that are made of a bunch of tiny flowers? Mm -hmm. Maybe just avoid them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> avoid them is what I would do. Um, you could you could wet felt a sheet like a, a, of a color, and then. Once that's going and it's like kind of underway, cut it, cut it, maybe even into circles, just cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, and then have all of those. And then just at the very end, wet felt those, and then you would make tiny little, little pinched. Yeah, but yeah, I, I avoid anything that's, that's right. <laughs> that doesn't just take me. A uh, couple of seconds. So the receptacle is the um, where the flower organs, like where the stem comes up and meets the, like the sepals go out. Yes. The yes. And then it's the receptacle that has all of the uh, reproductive stuff. Yes. And, holds the petals. and yes. So the sepals are the any kind of little green leaf mm -hmm. under the flower that originally, I guess, were protecting the flower when it's a bud. Right. They kind of open up. And did we talk about the pistol and stamen versus the, um, we were talking about that, right? There's, yeah, the stamen is the uh, male part. Right. And, and the pistol we were talking about. 
what's it called? A spadix. Spadix. So, so the, the calla lily only has the the one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking that I was looking at this piece that does have pre felt in it and feeling kind of the structure of it. And I think I'm going to try my calla lily with some pre felt for the green part. And then I can have the red blend into it and I won't get that weird edge that I don't like. So, um, somebody's asking what is haloing? I lost my scissors already. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> haloing is the Angora is so soft and fine and maybe it doesn't really felt. I think maybe it felt a little bit, but so it is, it escapes. Like if, if you were to spin Angora, um, I don't think we have any here anymore. I might have some in my, my, this is my stash, but I don't think it's worth running to get it. Um, so you would have this yarn where everything's twisted together. Oh, look, I'm like too fast for the, for the camera. Yeah. It's <laughs> um, eventually uh, some of the fibers escape and they kind of, they kind of like splay out. And so if it's a scarf or some, you know, some, it's, it's awesome because it looks really cool and it's very soft and it feels good. Okay. There's my cow lily. I'm not going to use any hankies because bad. So we'll do We'll do a nice big pink flower with maybe some pink and white and some silk. Oh, Marsha, will you do me a favor? Sure. In the other room is some natural merino, and I can't remember if I left it on the wet felt skin table or if I put it back on the top yeah. shelf. And if while you're at the wet felting table you see a funky, cool, silky teal, you can grab that. <laughs> All right, while we're waiting for that, let's do, let's try a daylily again. Hopefully, I'll do a little better this time. just like I'll come back and get it in a second if it's not there it looks just like natural merino you know what I mean like a regular bundle this is the the dragon color that I made it's really pretty we need to put it on a leaf thank you sorry okay some cool things to consider I'm sorry if you're asking questions and I've sent I've sent Marsha a quest. <laughs> oh, okay. Be anywhere back there. Right. I'm like, I'm like the sweetest chef. I'm like, mm, we're more pretty, like just throwing stuff around. Okay, something to consider when you're laying your flowers out is that the end that you grab is going to be more blunt than the end that gets pulled out. So you can use that if you, if you want a more blunt, if you're going for that blunt edge, then put that towards the edge. If you're going for blendy fringe, then put the fringy spot towards the edge. All right, so the other one I did orange in the center. This one I'm gonna do yellow in the center and orange towards the edge. And are you using tussa or mulberry? So. We have tussa. Some stuff that I've made has tussa, but we're really switching more to mulberry um, in terms of what we're going to carry. It's it's shinier. Um, well, the, 
they, they just, just kind of do, do two, two different things, things I guess. That's what somebody was asking too. Yeah. Uh, is there any difference in the feltability of mulberry versus tussa? No, the, so n neither of them felt, but the way that they get captured in the wool felt can change a little bit. All right, so we were discussing how many points uh, daylilies have. We decided five, even though we don't really know. So I'm gonna make a star. Thank you. Uh, normally, it has three petals and three sequels. According to Wikipedia, we both were like, "How does fit?" Oh, three. But you know what? I think it's sections of three. So there's three and then three. Uh, looking at the flower. Let me see. But it's that's why. And so it's it's three and then three underneath the sequels. I'm gonna stick. I know. It's, <laughs> right, we'll do some of have five. I guess it depends on the variety. We'll do it's six. So many. I feel like, you know, normally an odd number is a little more. This one over here has eight. All right, yeah, we're going to depend on the species. Again. This okay. Is species. Yes, yes, thank you. We're going to do six. Anything you want. All right, so, so now I've covered up my yellow. So, so I'm going to go back and just put a little. Now, with that. Theory in mind, I'm going to point the fringe out so that that's super blendy and my yellow chunk ends up in the middle. Super blendy is a very scientific felting term. Sorry, my dogs are here today. Okay, there's her day lily. Move that on out. Let's do Amazon. Ooh, Amazon. Yeah, That's Amazon always exciting. exciting. All right. I'm going to do just a regular circle. And then this one is one I'm kind of thinking of that big kind of irisy shape but we'll see <laughs> we'll see what happens somebody was asking if you could make the picture of you a little bit bigger but i think it would maybe um know, i will eventually take up this space yeah maybe for showing stuff. i have this lily of the valley i'm gonna put into this i'm gonna try and sort of oh boy can you i don't know if you can see how staticky it is i'm gonna try to not have like straight lines and kind of use it as a hanky would be like a little a little haphazard and maybe it'll do something cool to these edges it's such a pretty color oh my gosh so i'm just like i'm trying not to i'm trying to get it a little more irregular you know and not stripey i guess All right, we're gonna put a little bit of purple in here. This is also mulberry silk. And this one I'm trying to really get, you know, fanning out from the center, but I'm having quite the static, <laughs> static issue here. Okay, so now I have a wool layer, I have a lot of silk, and I need to tack my silk down with a little more wool. So I could do this, I could do it um, the same thing, kind of fringy and coming out from the center, or you could like make it um, more distinct shape and you know, put that in the center. Let's try that. We'll see what that does. So that's going to help hold my, my purple silk, but for the Lily of the Valley silk, I need to put just a little bit of wool. So I'm taking an ever so thin bit of white and just using it right on the edge here. 
Laura commented that if you spray a mist of water onto the um, air, it cuts down on the static. Yes, sometimes I keep a, um, you know, like a wet paper towel or a damp sponge and you just, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't have a water mister right now that I would would trust not to uh, totally just dampen everything. Okay, so I'm going to scoot and scoot and see if I can fit one more thing here. Hmm. Oh, let's do the, um, this might be it. I'll do the calla lily and then... That might be it. How do I get this centered? Okay. So, like I said, I wanted green to, to red. So, we're going to say we're going to say that this is the, the back side of the calla lily. And then I'm going to flip it over and this will be the more Oh, do we want to do a different color than red? We could do um, pink to purple. We could do a little, I think there's purple cow lilies. We'll do use some of our purples. Well, these being the Serafina version. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you for reminding me. You know, it's okay. <laughs> okay, so let me put a little bit of green on here just to get get the leaf color or the marine pre-felt color a little bit covered up and it needs a little bit of soup just because this has wool in it so i don't need to add more wool on top all right now i'm going to put my purple fringe edge pointing in, blunt edge, kind of just outside of the green. That way. So when you start to wet felt these, how much space do you leave in between? Like um, do you leave just like an inch or so? Yeah. It might grab a little bit. I put a little more green back on there to reestablish it. Now this side, I want to be entirely purple. Yeah, you want it far enough away that um, it's not going to attach to each other. The cool thing about wet felting is that you really can get two different sides, you know, because there's no stab through. But with needle felting, you know, you're you're kind of polluting your one color with another. On the video you just flipped it, it's going to be really pretty. Put a little deeper purple towards the center, like, you know, kind of shadowy. This, like, with a bright orange, what's it called again? Spadix. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be a great pop. Yeah. All right, before I move on, is there any, like, we have to see a different... I feel like this is a pretty good mix. So you're using the um, new flower bats, right? Yes, the... most of what I'm using is the flower bats, but you can take any... You can take any merino silk combo. You know, you can use any of the merinos either to change these or, you know, I could have tinted this instead of with the flower bat with a deeper purple. I could take a little bit of this, um, uh, I'm trying to remember what this is called now. And like, you know, whoops, let me get to where you can see me here and put, um, yet another color in here. Um, it's not, I don't think it's a lake. It might be lake. 
Yeah, I think it is like because yeah. rust is the other one, and that's more of a popular. Yeah. Okay, so I have my, my daylily, no marigolds that real RNG. We have our just great big flower that we don't totally know what it's going to be yet. We have our um, whatever it's called. And just spacing them out right on here. And we have all our little leaves over here. Moving them around, getting them spaced out. All right, we're ready to wet those. And then in the process, you know, we can, I'm going to show you how I fold some edges or, um, I have, I'm good. Yeah. My pore wall is pretty covered with schmutz from my dragon. So unprofessional showing you my schmutz. Very well used. Yeah. Any questions right now? On the leaves, we'll do a little fold over, maybe you can see, or I don't have too much laid out here that I necessarily want to fold over. Maybe we'll cut something and see how that works. Okay, so my I, I can't get the whole scene on here for you, but um, my water is warm and has some dawn. And the first thing I'm going to do is just wet everything down. I'm going to end up dripping probably. <laughs> This is not a very huge project. It's usually about three or four sprinklers full. And then at this point, I'll get some soapy hands and start to feel where I am with, um, with how much water is on here. And that's the lavender? Mm. Uh, this is the um, olive oil soap, it's just the unscented. But You'll see, you'll see like if there's a poofy area where you need more water and sometimes you can just kind of push it around to get from A to B. So I try to do that before I really sprinkle a lot more because that's when you start to get water running everywhere. So Laura mentions, and I'm not sure if it's a question or a statement, it has a question mark, fold at least over a wire to dry to establish the main vein. Sure. That'd be cool. We can try that with one. So right now I've got kind of a gentle pressure. Um, you know, in the, the flower video, the one that we did, it was kind of the timing was coincidental with, um, Livingfeld and she, I feel like, and I, I might be wrong, but I feel like, um, Marie has a little more wet felting background and I have a little more needle felting background and she has an, a, a few good flower videos. Um, so there's a lot to pick up. You know, sort of from all over. Yeah, and just experiment. Yeah, yeah. My knowledge is kind of, you know, limited to certain things. And well, the more you do, the better you get. Yeah. And you understand. So my pressure right now is really kind of gentle because I'm just, I just want everything to begin to, um, to begin to, I guess they say form a skin, just to begin to start to hold together and you can kind of feel it under your hands like it goes from sort of mushy to more um more established which is pretty cool i'll show you this work over here a little bit i 
Patty Boy says she loves the olive oil and lavender, so it makes her room smell so good. Oh, yeah. She keeps an open bar in the bedroom. Nice. So she can smell. <laughs> nice. Oh, man, they taste like that. We accidentally got a couple of bricks of goat milk. Oh, did, did you take some of those home? No, I didn't. Oh, you should. And that recently? Um, I don't know. Some sometime over the COVID. <laughs> um, and so we just divvied them up and took them home. But oh my gosh, it's like it's like super creamy and it's unscented, but um, very nice. Okay, so when you do, you know, I don't know how long I've been going, just a few minutes, five minutes maybe. Um, but when you do feel things tightening up under there, you want to peel back your wall. And when you do, you might need to um, grab the wool edges. But what you're trying to do is make sure it's not sticking. And this is when we might flip some things over. So I got a little bit of sticking here, so I need to hold it down, you know, make sure I'm not pulling it apart. It's a big pain when you have like 20 things because <laughs> you have to get everyone, um, everyone off of the wall. It's really good to turn stuff over, especially with the um, pre-felt because you want to work it from both sides and make sure that it's really sticking on both sides. Phew! Got that all done. So this one I did not want to fold an edge because I want it to be very natural and malleable. This leaf, let's fold. Let's just fold our little edges over and get like a little kind of crisper shape so you can see how that one is going to look. Maybe this one too. Now, if I cared what the side, this side looked like, I could put a little more fiber on there. It's still felted finely enough that, um, that that wouldn't matter. You know what I mean? Like it would work in one I'm just going to leave the way it is but turn it over. Well you guys can't see me. This one I'm going to fold over. It's a cool shape. Let's try on this one putting a little more fiber. But when you do that you really need to make sure your hands are dry again. So you can see how it's kind of dark. And then where I folded the lighter edges over, there's a line. So we're going to put this on and try to eliminate that. This one, I just want to turn over. This one, I definitely want to turn over. It was on, I'm going to move it. It was on the edge and not really getting reached enough. This is our lily. I'm going to flip that over. And if I want to here, I can, let me see if I can get it more in here. I can do some folding and see if I can kind of establish some points. Oh, it's dripping on my foot. Gross. Now, I'm going to stretch things around because it looks a little wonky to me and I don't want it to be uneven. But I might not like that that pointy, but we're going to we're going to try it. All right, and then I need to flip the calla lily over. Ooh, I like that. Now, because I put so much purple on the back, I feel like if I fold this in, it's not going to have, it's going to look more natural. It's not going to have that weird line. Well, I was wondering, uh, would you stretch the edges into shapes at this point or wait a bit? That's kind of what I'm doing with the 
with the folds. Or yeah. Anything. Like, like I, with this one, I sort of stretched it. You don't want to go too long when you want to manipulate something because it'll it'll felt, you know. All right, we'll see how that does. So I could, with this, kind of encourage a slightly different, you know, a slightly different shape than just a circle. We'll try it. So would you, at some point, would you even, you know, if you wanted to cut some of them and then Put more yes. On, you know, yeah. Um, I would do it a little bit more before you cut, but um, this is where kind of other people's experience might tell you something a little different. You know what I mean? Like, I can see from sitting over here. Some of these flowers and stuff. They're translucent, and you just see these silk. Like, it looks like little baby silk. It's so beautiful. That's cool. All right, everything is down again. Just gonna soap up my hands a little bit. Keep going. Um, yeah, if you're doing something where you want distinct petals, I would felt it uh, quite a bit more. Cut your, cut your petals, and then just hand, just hand refelt them just at the very end. And I think I might do that in the other, in the other video. Like, if you want a pretty well-established shape, I would get the felt well-established, cut the shape so it's well-established, and then you're just trying to get rid of the edges, you know. So olive oil soap is the magical thing for wet felting, isn't it? There's something that I think it's something with the pH of it. Okay. And um, it's it's a scientific thing with how the wool reacts to water and so. Um, yeah, that's a little more scientific -y than I am. <laughs> but I mean, I've I've done a lot of wet felting with just Dawn, you know. But um, I, I almost everything I've come across, they they like olive oil soap. And the ruffles that you get with a lot of your flowers is that where it's thinner and it just dries? Yeah, that's, that's like, like, I'll show you at the end, you kind of, you you can crinkle it up and then felt it so that it gets kind of that crepey, um, part of it might be the silk, you know, it's, it's happy accidents. I'm going to look at this day, Lily. I kind of feel like I might want to... Well, I think it's going to be okay now. See, the other one I cut, I cut, and it's it, it, it was too, it needs more of this. So, like, don't cut your petals in too far, then they just want to flop out. You know, I was actually looking at my azalea as, after helping me, like, watch last weekend, going out and looking at the flowers, and a lot of those petals, it's pretty much in that type of shape where it's one solid yeah. piece. Yeah. But then it's cut, you know, cut, and I, I just really yeah. And then the poppies were totally different. They had two mm -hmm. alternating. Oh my God. Yeah. And they were like half of the size of the flower, and it just, it would pour together, and it just all together. Yeah. It's just so Then you got the peonies, which are like a million beautiful petals. If I were to do a peony, I would probably make a long strip, try to have a wavy edge, and then you'd just pretty much be rolling it up and trying rolling it up. Yeah. So, you know, I've done this a good bit on both sides. I'm going to do a little bit of rolling. I've got my um, pool noodle. And I've got, we might, we might start changing our wet felting kits to have these, um, these strips instead of, um, um, what's it called? The, that elastic stuff. Yeah, this is a tourniquet um, strip. It's a little slippery when your hands are soapy. <laughs> <laughs> but it holds tight, um, and it's a lot less labor for us than um, than the bathing suit material that we have to cut into two strips. But I also lately have been just using my towel, um, so I'm sorry it's going to get a little shaky here. Let's let's open the other screen. Whoop! 
So um, Sabine and Laura were talking about um, Barbara had asked about the rough ledges, and they were answering and saying, you know, you can really stretch them to get them to ruffle. And I think yeah. it's kind of it's a combination thing, right? So it's stretching them, it's having them nice and thin, you know, wrinkling them up a little bit. Yeah, there's a lot you could do to manipulate. I'm sorry, I'm going to check my phone. My kids are home alone. Uh, they're okay. <laughs> I know. No matter how old they get, so it's good to check them out. So how tightly are you wrapping the pool noodle? Oh, it's tight. Like, as tight as you can. Because if you don't and you start rolling, then it's all, like, shifting around in there. Yeah. So the flowers aren't quite as like crazy. Oh, I'll show you. I'll show you that painting. There's the painting up there. Um, they're not quite as crazy as um, you know a big wet felted picture. So I'm not trying to do like a hundred each direction. I'm just gonna do what? Oh no, that's okay. I can talk. <laughs> they're all like I'm all shaky. That's part of the obvious one. Get to the. So I'm just going to go that way a few times. Take my tourniquet off. I feel very, very fancy with my... And then I'm turning it. I'm putting my pool noodle at the other end. I've gone 90 degrees. Went from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Oops, I got my... Got something wrinkled up here. Uh, you guys are going to have so much fun with this. I mean, it's, oh my gosh, the calla lily color is just gorgeous. This is the Sarah Felton dance. We made some, I know, right? We made some nice bats. I am so excited. Ooh, and wait till you guys see the new skin tones. Do you have them up here? I do. Because we zoomed the other day with them. They're, um... Here, I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to talk about the skin tone. <laughs> I don't mind doing it. I don't mind doing it. I'm going to show off the skin tones. Which should be, uh, shouldn't be too long. We're going to taunt you. So everything is, um, okay, Marsha is now wrapping. <laughs> so I'm going to switch over and try to keep a, um, keep an eye on the comments. Um, okay, so all we have 20 new core colors and basic, basically all the merino changed. So everything that we had recipes for, um, kits and house carded bats, needs new recipes. Um, so when I reformulated the skin tones, I wanted to keep it to core and merino. Like each bat family kind of has a different purpose. Like the flower bats all have silk in them. The pelts have core and long staple fibers. So they're very sort of use specific, not just color specific. Um, so now the skin tones, they're a little more uniform. They have a shorter staple so that when you need to pull, you know, tiny tufts, just to stick here and there, it'll be a lot easier to do that. And I feel like we got them a little bit more skin tony. <laughs> so I'm really excited. Um, alabaster is beautiful. It's like just this very creamy, um, sort of marble pale fair, more beautiful than ever. Um, I never liked glow and I feel like I got glow better it's a more balanced kind of um, suntanned. Well, I say suntanned for for me, it's suntanned. And then um, olive is also a better balance. It's um, it's not as dark as it used to be, so it's different. Olive is probably the one that is most different, but it kind of it needed to be because now it's more more like a skin tone. Bronze is still gorgeous, and our darkest Arabica, 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 Arabica. 
so pretty. Like just this beautiful, cool cocoa color. It's gorgeous. Um, cheeky. Everything's better. So um, I'm gonna see why. I don't see any comments, Marcia. I don't know what's happening. Um, you might need to check. I'm not keep rolling. We did the um, we did the pelts also. Not as much of a change there because we're still using um, we're still using coral wool. We're still using a, a mix of top coats and long fibers, alpaca. Um, but and they we really matched them. Like they still are are very much the same color. So anyway, they're all going to get rephotographed and listed, and it's very exciting. Okay, I'll take that. Very good. Nice and tight, so if you want to. And it's rotating, right? Okay. Let me see. I'm going to mine just like stopped. Yeah. Um... Oh, wait, there's someone just said something. Yeah, there's a couple in there. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys are excited because I'm so, I'm so excited. Like, I just, I'm so happy with the improvements that we're making to what we carry and, um, you know, we've always done the best we can, but I feel like this is uh, really, really good changes. So um, Audrey is asking, is the bubble instead of the bamboo roll you sometimes use? So I've never used bamboo. And I think if you're working tiny, like those little, like some people use them, um, it helps compress the wet felting as you're rolling. Okay, okay. Um, I've done it with teeny tiny things. Like it's a, it's yeah. a nice mat. So they're what, four yeah. inches by 14 something? Yeah. I think if, if I, I worked, worked with that, that, I might still work on the bubble, bubble wrap. wrap. Mm -hmm. Just, just it protects your surfaces. surfaces. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think you, actually I'm trying to remember because it's been a while. But yeah, you still use the wall and a little piece of bubble wrap. But, and we yeah. use the blue, which is more durable. Yeah. So, so these, these are, these, these are nice. nice. These are pretty well felted. Um, if you were going to cut something, oh wait, I guess what's your work? If you were going to cut something, now is when I would cut it and then work it you know, work it in your hands or even like kind of roll it around a little bit. You can feel everything. Um, you can, ch you can change shapes um, by where you, kind of where you felt. So this is what I was saying with some a flower like this, got a little polluted. I could, I would find the center and pinch it and then do a little bit of this and probably even dry it like this. And that'll give you that sort of, um, that kind of fan shape, you know, it's a little floppy right now. Make sure you stay on your center. Sometimes you pinch the center and it goes off a little bit. So the skin tones, the new formulated ones, mm -hmm. they're going to be going into production on our end, and then they'll eventually make it to the website. So yes, they are. They are. We'll we'll sell out. You know what we have. We'll just keep what we have, and we'll sell them out as we're producing the new ones, and then everything will get photographed and listed. And so the hair, uh, Brenda was asking if the hair behind you, that's the, um, you have the hair and the snow hair, we did it as a workshop. And so far for a video, did you do just the snow hair? Yes, yes we, we haven't done the brown hair yet. Okay, but you plan on doing that one? At yeah, some point? <laughs> yeah. I have it all, I have it all figured out, you know. My little, um, day lily got a little off center, but.
So I, I, I think it's better not cut. You know, like when you cut it, 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 it got too floppy. It needs all of that. I know I've said that a hundred times. It seems like you should, maybe would, but I've made some flowers, like cone flowers, and um, uh, like black eyed Susan type flowers that are, are, are individual petals. Um, I didn't want to do that today because it's time consuming, but that's where I think it's in the other video, and that's where you would cut and kind of get each flower felted. You could do something like this in a pretty color and cut petals and leave the strip uncut so that all your petals are still on a strip. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I love this and I love the, I love the green on the back. So that was really cool. And that is all gonna be a matter of kind of construction to get that one shaped. Don't look at the comments yet. Okay. But um, here's a joke from Judy. Okay. Why do flowers always drive so fast? Um, why do flowers always drive so fast? I don't know why. They put the pedal to the metal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Kyla, <laughs> like, said that one in the... <laughs> So I'm just kind of feeling everything and making sure it's all good. I'm very happy with the pre-felt in this because it does, it, this flower does have a lot of structure, you know, so um, I'm really happy with that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, it's green on the outside. And then this one, I'm happy with the uh, the change to the not being cut. I think that's going to be really cool once there's some structure to it, which is next week. So exciting. This one, um, I don't know if we'll cut this or not. Should we cut it just because we're here wet felting and we'll try it? So let's see. I'd say that's the top. And we're going to do kind of like I did that other one. So Barbara's asking, you're not rinsing out the soap? Not quite yet, because I'm still, still a felton. Mm -hmm. And about, um, what was about the width of the cable that you were doing? Oh, okay. Yeah, we can, we can measure it. So it doesn't take much when you cut something to, you know, change up that cut edge. So the calla lily um, is about five inches wide and about um, six inches long. When I laid it out, it was, pro you know, it probably had an extra inch, not necessarily because it's like shrunk that much, but because um, I did fold the, I did fold the edges over. Yeah. So that's kind of big. You could go a little smaller. That, that's, that's a, that's pretty big. Do not do what I do. So when I dry this, I'll sort of force it into a shape. Um, but what I want to do right now is get this back like this. Ready for a couple more tips? Yes. What do you call flowers who are BFFs? I don't know what. Buds. <laughs> Did you hear about the flower? Then they're BBBs. Oh, yeah. Wait. Best, best buds. BBFs. Best buds forever. Best buds forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, you guys are jumping in with the, with the jokes. That's awesome. Here's another one from Judy. Did you hear about the flower who never bloomed? No. It was a bud omen. A <laughs> bud <laughs> I remember my mom saying when I went to college, yeah, I think you're just, this is the year you're going to bloom. Because <laughs> I was a late bloomer, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Kind of in every way. I'm still blooming. 
So Audrey says she has arthritis, so she might struggle to do all the rolling in one go. If I keep the fiber wet, could I do it in two or three stints across a few hours? Yes. So we had I had a participant in the class recently who thought the same thing and had no trouble. Um, so I guess it kind of depends where your pain is and you know what aggravates it. Um, but like really like. Just letting the pressure of the weight of your arms, like I feel like all the tediousness of needle felting and wire wrapping is harder, you know, on your your hand um, joints than wet felting. And even like this part, you can do. It doesn't have to be crazy, you it's know. Just, it's well, or have friction, I think, too, with the. Yeah, or you could get the the sander. Oh, right. You know? Will you hot cold these for me? I was, yeah, I can do that for you. Um, and with the sander, you put that. Um, I'm going to give you this whole. Oh, yeah. We're going to wrap it up like this, and I'm going to have the towel at the bottom. <laughs> like a big flower baby burrito. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okie dokie. I'm soaking wet. Whoops. <laughs> I just moved me. Okay, let me get that right here. My fingers all wet. This is going to be fun. I cannot wait to see um, what you guys make, as always. I just know it's going to be spectacular, and I'm just going to be scrolling and going, oh my god, wow. Um, because I think what I love so much about fiber art is that the fiber does, I'm looking at the flower colors lovingly. That's what I'm looking at. The fiber does a lot of the work. So it's, you know, the, the skill involved in um, manipulating it and, you know, understanding all the possibilities and getting good at getting to the goal of what you want, you know, t from A to B. Definitely, there's a lot to learn. Um, but I think what's really cool is when artists let the fiber do the talking because um, so with these colors and techniques and keeping it loose um i think you guys are going to make some really amazing stuff and then i'm sure some of you will take it to the next level and probably should be teaching the flowers instead of me um oh yeah yeah i'm just looking at the comments about the about um the standing and also when you roll you know the other table i work on in the other room is a little low so even when i'm laying my stuff out it's not great for my back because i'm just ever so slightly bent over so you know it's important to think about these things and then if you are hurting somewhere to take a minute to try to undo it with some stretching or um you know just doing something different Marsha is delivering the goodies. Thank you. Okay. Oh, did, did they, they go through the, the um the spinner? The spinner. Yeah. So I could, you could iron what you want smooth. You know, like you could crinkle what you want crinkled. I think I'm gonna crinkle this one up to dry it. This one ended up a little thick, actually. This this day lily. Um, so I'm going to just kind of pinch it up to, to dry it. And then once I unfold it, I may iron these tips. I could iron them now. I could hit them with the iron now. Oh, this one's really fun. So this was the, the one that we cut at the last minute. Um, so I'm just going to shape it. 
shape it a little bit um, and let it let it dry. Yeah, if I even pinch that more, it gives it a little bit more character. I'm not sure how I like that lily of the valley in there, but that's okay. Um, this is the sheet that I made. This is just kind of like my extra. This is the, oh gosh, that's pretty. It did get a little, like this is super well blended and then down here, I've got a little bit of high contrast, but that's okay. So this is the cow lily, and I can shape this too. I can have this tip kind of um, I can kind of shape that around and you know what I mean, like really sculpt it and then set it so that it'll dry like that. Be a good idea to have like some little cups and things, right? Yeah, any little thing you start saving all kinds of crap out of your, <laughs> out of your trash, but sort of anything that you can, um, like a little cone shape that you can wrap this around. Um, but pretty much, if you especially this one because it has the pre fold in it, it's pretty strong. If I kind of shape it with my fingers and then let it dry like that, um, it just set it down, it'll it'll dry like that. I love that. I'm really happy with that. Um, in my leaves, I will, I will iron and the leaves are going to have kind of maybe like a better side or, you know, you'll see, um, you'll see once you. So would you bind them when they're rolled up? Like, I guess you could do like a needle and thread if you wanted to, right? Oh yeah, you could. I, I'm lazy and I, I rarely end up stitching but um i like these irregular leaves that i made you can um there's times when you're building a flower that sewing it together might really help i think i think i actually did on something i think on this crazy looking cone flower that i'm not very happy with um i sewed sewed yeah this one Pretty sure I ended up doing a little bit of sewing to get that to stay together. But I'm not, this is, I don't know. This was a long, I had that piece of purple like left over from something. That one was gonna drop. This is <laughs> not, it's just not great. Um, all right, so I have many things that I made today. Um, these are the ones I made before we got together. Maybe I'll do kind of like a, a cone flower with this one since I don't know what to do with this one. The one that's cut too much. And then, oh, the spinner really makes a difference. This is pretty. I like trying to get kind of this kind of shape with these circles, but then have it kind of bending out a little bit. What is that? That's a, um, they're out now. <laughs> oh, the, um... Petunia. Petunia? Are there... Well, yeah, and then I keep on seeing, uh... The, the so this one to dry, I would probably put it like this, so that that curve around happens. So, and uh, Sue's asking if you have to spin them to dry. No, like, these other ones were only just rolled in a towel. It just takes a little longer, but yeah, if you have a spinner. This was the other one that I started this morning with the kind of the harsh edge on the back. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll tease that out or something. I don't know. I guess we could use a salad spinner, right? Yeah, you can use a salad spinner. Anything that's successful. I might kind of try to sort of pull that apart. Like, I feel like I should have put a little bit more red to blend that together, but I still can, I still can make something pretty. And can you add wire to the wet felting? Well, you know, the construction of the flower uses wire, um, which is what we're going to do next week. And, um, yeah, this is the one, other one that I cut too much. Ew, I made the same ugly 
the same ugly color pattern. Um, so, uh, I don't know what the, I don't know, in the actual flower or? Yeah. Well, I mean, in the stems, we're yeah, using wires. Um, so, the rhino that you have up there. Yes. A couple of people were asking about it. Now. We can look at the rhino. I don't know what, I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. <laughs> I do not know. This one I want to fan out a little bit, so I'm going to. And so, Sue, we use, we actually have a laundry spinner because we use the uh, spinner in the back for after we're done um, washing fleeces. We have such a big amount to put in there. We can't use a little towel spinner. Yeah, the rhino is a pretty big project. It has a wet felted skin. Oh, the wool. What was the name of that fiber in here? started with an M. Oh, it was the teeny tiny, itty, the, the it curls? The, yeah, um, it was a... Montdale. Montdale. It was a breed that I was not previously um, familiar with. And I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me turn it this way. Um, shove it up in your face. Might be a little bit better. I don't know. It's got... We use these teeny tiny little curls to suggest um, all of the cool, you know, wrinkles and stuff that are in their, um, in their skin. And we wet felted the skin so that we could make, you know, the armor so that we could make all the bumps that they have. And anyway, yes, very... Very fun project. Possible online class for that Yeah, one. yeah. Yeah, that was a really fun project. Huh. Well, okay, get to it. Can't wait to see what you guys make. And let's plan on Saturday at 1. And let's plan on making some flowers together. If you want. I mean, I'll just be working. And everybody's will be a little different because you're going to have different things to work with. But we can at least do some stamens together um, and go through, you know, the construction and the leaves. I would re I recommend watching the second flower video before then because it it does go over everything. So then our live video will just be a icing on the cake kind of thing. Any other questions before we go? Like just some really funny jokes to go back to. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Thank you for the jokes. Thank you for, for filling in on that, um, and thanks for being here today, and uh, thank you for being as excited as it, about everything as we are. So, I will see you soon. Have a wonderful weekend, and can't wait to see what you guys do. Bye.